peace. In the 60s and 70s, it was a greeting shared among just about everyone, but especially the hipsters of the day. These days, many in the world can't imagine what real peace even looks like. What with a worldwide pandemic, culture wars, and other tensions? Is it any wonder that many are feeling such a sense of anxiety and discomfort? Well, hello, Daily Dosers. It's Terry once again from our singles ministry here at North Coast. And as Christians, we know that we're not the first generation to experience this, but that we are called to something more. We're called to peace. Another of the amazing attributes Jesus brings to us while we await the opportunity to celebrate his birth during the season of Advent. As we've learned during this series, Advent is a season of the liturgical year observed in most Christian denominations as a time of expectant waiting and preparation for both the celebration of the Nativity of Christ at Christmas and the return of Christ at the Second Coming. But it's hard to wait, much less celebrate, if we're experiencing anxiety or unrest, especially in our relationships, even if we can admit that our strife is mostly self-inflicted. It's real. We're asked to move, and everything comes at us so quickly these days. As that famous theologian named Ferris, Ferris once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And when we're moving quickly, sometimes our relationships get left behind, or even caught in the crossfire. I've experienced this, and I suspect you have too. And when we're in conflict with other people, it can really do a number on our sense of inner peace. For a variety of reasons, difficulty in relationship just seems to get amped up at the holidays. And yet, in a great sermon Jesus gave, he calls us to do our part to be peacemakers. You know, as much as I want to make peace with others, and I know it takes two, I have to admit that sometimes I just seem to get in my own way. Someone says or does something that hurts me, and I too often judge or I'm tempted to write them off too quickly. Or sometimes even I have to fight my inner spirit not to want to get even. Thankfully, Scripture frequently recognizes this, and we have the Holy Spirit to guide and provide good counsel as an antidote. Proverbs 12, verse 20 says, Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. Biblical peace is much more than the absence of conflict. It is taking action to restore a broken situation. It's more than just a state of inner tranquility. It's a state of wholeness and completeness. God is the source of peace, and our peace may be only found in, in and through our relationship with Jesus. Jesus who was, who is, and whoever will be is the one who calls us to and equips us for peace. Paul, the apostle, originally wrote to early Roman believers and now counsels and encourages us to rely solely on God's grace for our salvation, helping us to understand how people can be made righteous and live transformed lives through Christ. In the 12th chapter of Romans, Paul writes, Do not pay, repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And then he closes this section with, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Apostle Peter also echoes these sentiments and adds, whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from evil speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. Isn't that good? But the enemy can have a field day with most of us in these areas. Yet in both cases, these guys are helping us to understand that if we want genuine peace in our lives, since we're made to be relational, one big way is to do our part to shore up our relationships. Grace through faith is what we're assured, but we're also called to extend to others. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure and the challenges they would face with others who were not believers, he promised he would send an advocate, the Holy Spirit, to lead and guide us. He could recognize that they were troubled at what he was saying, so he said, 
I have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Are there relationships in your world as we approach Christmas that lack peace, that are in turmoil and could really use some help? Well, take encouragement from Paul and Peter and bring Jesus into the center of your strife. When you do, Paul encourages us as he did the Roman and the Philippian believers, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In the prophetic words of Isaiah, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus came into our world to help us. It is my prayer in this season that your relationship with him will help you in your relationship with others, and that in so doing, you might begin to experience real peace in this area. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next time.